Hello everyone and compliments of the season. This is the Christmas edition of the Science Chef Educational Series on Chemistry. In this video, we'll be looking at the third part of a series on redox reactions titled Test for Oxidizing and Reducing Agents. If you are yet to watch the first two parts of the series, the basic introductions and how to identify oxidizing and reducing agents in redox reactions, just click on their links in the description below. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe how to test for oxidizing agents by using hydrogen sulfide gas and an ion 2 salt solution. And also describe how to test for reducing agents by using acidified potassium permanganate 7 and potassium dichromate 6 solutions. Go nowhere as we'll be right back after this timeout. Thanks for being there. In our last tutorial, we learned that an oxidizing agent helps to oxi oxidize another substance while a reducing agent causes another substance to be reduced. So, if you want to learn how to test for these substances in the laboratory, then ensure you watch this video to the end. Let's start with the test for oxidizing agents. It is obvious that in a redox reaction, an oxidizing agent always reacts with a reducing agent. Therefore, to test for an oxidizing agent, a non-reducing agent will be used. In this tutorial, we will be using hydrogen sulfide gas and an ion 2 salt solution as a reducing agent. Most redox reactions involve color changes due to the changes in the oxidation states of the ions and radicals involved which makes it easy to observe when a reaction occurs. So, if we bubble a stream of hydrogen sulfide gas into an unknown solution or gas and observe the deposition of yellow sulfur, then the unknown substance is an oxidizing agent. This is because only an oxidizing agent can oxidize hydrogen sulfide to elemental sulfur as shown in the first oxidation half equation. Similarly, if we bubble a stream of an unknown gas or add an unknown solution to a solution of freshly prepared ion 2 salt and observe the color of the ion 2 solution change from green to reddish brown, then the unknown gas is an oxidizing agent. This is because the ion 2 ions in the solution are oxidized to ion 3 ions as shown in the second oxidation half equation. Now, let's learn how to test for reducing agents. To test for reducing agents, we will be using known oxidizing agents like acidified potassium permanganate 7 and potassium dichromate. These solutions are acidified by adding a few drops of about 2 molar concentrated sulfuric acid to them. Their color changes make it easy to observe when they undergo reduction half reactions. So, if we bubble an unknown gas or add an unknown solution to a purple solution of acidified potassium permanganate 7 and observe it turn colorless, then the unknown substance must be a reducing agent. The reason is that only a reducing agent can reduce the purple permanganate 7 ions in the solution to colorless manganese 2 ions as shown in the first reduction half equation. Similarly, if we repeat the same test using orange acidified potassium dichromate 6 solution, it will be observed that the color of the solution changes to green, confirming that the unknown substance is a reducing agent. This is because the orange dichromate 6 ions in the solution are reduced to green chromium 3 ions as seen in the second reduction half equation. The principle of the last test with acidified dichromate 6 solution is employed in the breathalyzer, a device used to test for drunk driving, that is the act of driving under the influence of alcohol. Usually, if a driver is suspected of driving under the influence of alcohol, he will be made to breathe on the device and if the alcohol in his blood exceeds the legal limit, 
the vapor will reduce the orange dichromate 6 ions in the brittleizer to green chromium 3 ions, confirming the presence of alcohol, a reducing agent, in his blood. There are many ways of testing for oxidizing and reducing agents and there is no way we can cover all of them in this lesson as we have numerous oxidizing and reducing agents. However, the principle remains the same, using a known reducing agent to test for the presence of an oxidizing agent and vice versa. So if you enjoyed this lesson, like this video and subscribe to our channel. We always love to know what you think about our videos. Please endeavor to leave your comments and don't forget to turn on the notification bell to always be the first to get notified whenever we publish a new video. Thank you for watching.